Good morning, Ms. Miller and AP Research. My name is Myrna, and today I will be joined by Louise, Ollie, and Chloe. My group was assigned to Chapter 2, The Problem, The Heart of the Research Problem Process. Continuing on, finding research projects. Self-enlightenment should not be your main goal when it comes to the research project. Gathering info to gain knowledge is very different from gathering info to help be a part of the solution. A research problem should not be solved by simply looking at a website. The person must research the problem, should have to look for the solution and go in depth. Correlation and coefficients only compare how alike two variable, variables are, but we need to dig deeper and go more in depth. Similar to correlation, and coefficients. Simply a yes or no question is too straightforward when it comes to research. It is way too vague. When you have found your research topic of interest, go to a trusted application such as Google Scholar and search your topic or possibly your school library. Your research question should further develop research in that field you are reasoning. Next, is choosing an appropriate problem. When choosing an appropriate problem, you have to have some prerequisites like genuine curiosity for the unknown. It should narrow down your problem to only a few options. If you're still looking for some to choose from these strategies, we'll help you. Look around, you don't have to overthink the issues as it could be something you see daily or have always wondered. Reading Reading existing research about a topic will help you understand the general idea with what you are dealing with in your problem. Seeking advice from experts will also get you some better insight on your problem. Finding a topic you are interested in will pay off during the research because you won't be as busy, uh, as bored, and you'll actually be interested and motivated to work. Finally, have a realistic have realistic expectations. Don't set your goals too high to overworking yourself. After identifying a research problem, you must articulate the single goal of the total research. You must state your research clearly so that anyone else can understand the issues or questions you want to investigate. It must be said once Research is fully complete in one to two precise sentences. A big issue is when the researcher talks about the problem, but never actually states what the problem is. We might obtain data consistent with, the, with what we believe is true, but in the world of research, we can rarely say with 100% certainty that it is true. Good researchers try to keep open minds about what they might find. You can avoid difficulties we have been discussing by carefully editing your words. Editing is sharpening a thought to eliminate use, useless verbiage. Choose your words precisely, ideally selecting simple concrete nouns and active expressive verbs. Next is dividing the problem, your research problem into subproblems. Most Research problems are too large or complex to be solved without subdividing. A good strategy then is to divide and conquer among your group. Almost any problem can be broken down into smaller units or subproblems, sometimes in a form of specific questions that are easier to address and resolve. Subproblems versus pseudo subproblems. Finding the right issue to discuss will require you to being dif to differentiating the subproblems and the pseudo subproblem in your topic. Subproblems are integrated parts uh, of the main problem that are not just yes or no questions. These require some research and discussion, so they are complex enough to provide a good insight to the question. Pseudo subproblems are non-important issues in the topic that could usually be solved with a little bit of thinking instead of researching. Seeing this difference between subproblems will make you make your research a lot stronger and avoid less important parts to your research. 
characteristics and subproblems. Each subproblem might be researched as a separate subproject within the larger research goal. The solution to the subproblems taken together can then be combined to resolve the main problem. Each subproblem must be clearly tied to the interpretation of the data. After you have stated the subproblem, check them again. Check them against the statement of the main problem to make sure that they don't extend beyond the main problem and they address all and they address all significant aspects of the main problem. If the main problem is carefully stated and properly limited, the researcher will find that it usually contains two to six subproblems. You want to consider whether the solution to the overall research problem is realistic to being achieved and given the time and resources you have. Moving on is identifying subproblems. To identify subproblems, you must begin with the problem itself. Write down the main problem and then careful, carefully scrutinize it to detect more specific problems and that should be isolated for an in-depth study. All of the subproblems must add up to the total problem. You can use either paper and pencil or brainstorm, brainstorm using a software to help you identify your subproblems. Taking a pen, a, the pen, paper and pencil approach, copy down the problem on a clean sheet of paper, leaving considerable space between the lines. Then critically read the problem to identify specific topics that require in-depth treatment in order to, for the problem to be resolved. Draw a box around each topic. Make sure the words within each box include words that indicate the need for de data interpretation. Underline these words. Arrange the entire problem, which now has its subproblems in boxes in a graphic that shows the structure of the whole research design. Using brainstorming and the mind mapping software. Sometimes computer software's programs can be facilitated, can facilitate the process of breaking problems into subproblems. Examples of available pro programs are Brainstorm, Inspiration, MindJet, and XMind. A free one could be Coggle. Such programs allow you to brainstorm research ideas and construct graphic networks of related concepts, terms, and principles. You put the main problem, idea, or concept in a box or oval, whatever you prefer, in the middle of your computer screen. As you brainstorm related ideas, you put the, those on the screens and you draw arrows to represent how various, how the various ideas are interconnected. You can break each concept or problem into subparts and if helpful, break down each subpart even further. The process is fast and flexible and you can save, save it and print your final diagram. Moving on, every problem needs further Dilension. The statement of the problem establishes the goal of the research effort. The subproblems suggest ways of approaching the goal in a manageable, systematic way. But a goal alone is not enough to comprehend fully the meaning of the problem. We need other information as well. Both the researcher and those reading the research proposal should ultimately have a clear understanding of every detail of the process. Next is stating your hypothesis. Our focus here is the prior hypothesis. Those that, a research, re, that, those that researchers pose in advance, usually in conjunction with the research problem and its subproblems. Often a one to two, a one on one correspondence exists between subproblems and their corresponding hypothesis. Hypothesis can guide the re researcher toward choosing particular types of research designs, collecting particular kinds of data, and analyzing those data in particular ways. The data may turn support or not support your hypothesis. So your research hypothesis versus null hypothesis in a, quali 
quantitative research. Research hypothesis is those educated, educated guesses that researchers hope their data might support. When we hypothesize that there will be no difference between groups, no consistent relationships between variables or generally, no patterns in the data, we are forming a null hypothesis. Most null hypotheses are not appropriate as prior hypothesis. Instead, they are used primarily during statistical analysis. We support a research hypothesis by showing statistically that its opposite is probably not true. Next off is defining terms. Without knowing ex uh, what your specific terms or meet, more specifically what the researcher means by them, we cannot evaluate the research or determine whether the researcher has carried out what, what was pro proposed in the problem statement. Sometimes novice researchers rely on dictionary definitions, which are rarely adequate or helpful. Instead, each term should be defined as it will be used in the researcher's project. In defining a term, the researchers make the term mean whatever he or she wishes it to be meant with the context of the problem and its subproblems. Stating assumptions. Research is unable to exist without making assumptions and researching said assumptions ahead of time. On top of this, one thing you must do when completing a research pro project is develop pretest and post-test measurements in relation to the question. These are both put in the place to prevent misunderstandings in the research project. Ident identifying de delimitations and limitations. The statement of the research pro problem describes what the researcher intends to do, but it is also important to know what the researcher does not intend to do. The researcher can easily be drawn off course by addressing questions and obtaining data that lie beyond the boundaries of the problem under investigation. He or she should pr be primarily interested in the characteristics of the moti motifs, including their musical style, musical individuals, and like the likeness and differences. Study the characteristics that the re that is what a researcher of the of this problem will do good researchers also acknowledge that their research pro pro projects have certain weaknesses or limitations that cast shadows of doubt on results and conclusions weaknesses related to these are and other issues must be clearly stated in this discussion of limitations either in an introductionary section or in the final discussion or conclusion section. Next off, the importance of a study. As, as a researcher completing a research project, you must set forth a reason as to why you are, why you are studying this specific research question. Most, most studies have a tendency to go so deep and so far that they develop an extensive research. Researchers must ask themselves questions revolving around the practical, practical values of the studies. What use is this project? And what difference will it make in the long run? Writing the first chapter or sec section of a research pro proposal. When writing the first section or chapter, of a research proposal, you should present general research, present a general research problem with a large context. Following the research problem being addressed, several subparts should be identified, including prior, the prior hypothesis. You should also include definitions of terms that will aid the readers. Make sure assumptions are included both in the the delimitation and limitations. Finally, write your proposal. And lastly, fine-tuning your research problem. 
A critical step is to make sure you know enough about your topic that you can ask important questions and then make solid decisions about how you might answer those research questions. Try to take an objective, a critical view of what you are proposing to do. Such perspective can help minimize unwanted surprises. Once you have brought your research problem into clear focus, imagine walking through the whole research procedure. From the literature review through data collection, data analysis and interpretation. Beginning researchers frequently need to revise their problem in order to clarify it and make it and make it more manageable. One good way to do this is to show it to other people. If they don't understand what you intend to do, further explain and clarify what is needed and what you are trying to propose. Consider all the steps involved in researching, formulating a research problem, collecting and interpreting the data, describing what you have done in research and improve your research report through multiple drafts. Good researchers will consistently revise their thinking and as a result, their writing will be very strong. And that is it. Thank you for listening.